Hey guys, what's up? It's Volk here, one only, and today we're gonna take a look at Ian and Amon. So, I'm gonna go here to the Codex, because I'm pretty sure they're here, hopefully. Alright, yeah, there he is. So this guy is the Shadow Boss? Is the Shadow Guild's boss, is what people have been telling me? Alright, so let's see his leader skill. His leader skill is, oh... 40% increase in damage for lights okay that's not half bad he could really really be good and um decaying then but he is also defensive um let's take a look at some of his stats increases oh wait no we normally look at these first before we actually go to the passives uh his first skill inflicts damage on one enemy has a chance to taunt for one turn has a 100% chance to imprint the caster with Revelation Signet. So he's kind of like um, Edwin in a way. Off that. Let's see how much everything increases by. The taunt it goes to 65 like most of the other double SR tanks. Some of them. Alright, his second skill inflicts damage on all enemies. Has a chance to taunt for two turns. Has a chance to gain automatic counter for all allies one time for oh okay so this is a guarantee counter i would not recommend bringing this inside of sid's dungeon at all <laughs> i mean he has no business being in sid's dungeon with all the mental seals anyway 100 percent chance to get another signet uh let's see increase the taunt to 70. All right, his fifth skill, penetration damage to one enemy, cast engraving of destruction. Okay, we're definitely gonna have to take a look at some of this stuff. Uh, deals damage to two adjacent targets, so that just means side by side. Has a chance to cast engrave of destruction for two turns. Engrave of Destruction inflicts damage to max HP. What? Hold on. 200% of max HP when field 3 is used. Oh. That's definitely not going to work on bosses. <laughs> At least I hope not. <laughs> Does that basically mean an automatic KO? It's say 100 of max HP. And if I know correctly, Mental Seal does the same thing. Yeah, Mental Seal literally does the same thing. Um, isn't that basically the same thing? Oh, when their skill 3 is used, they automatically die. Okay. Oh, okay. That's not totally broken at all in PvP. <laughs> That's totally not broken at all in PvP. Yeah, I don't know what you guys are talking about. That's perfectly balanced. <laughs> so anybody using their skill 3 automatically dies. That's going to hurt. But you definitely have to use this at, like, the start of the turn or it's not going to count because most characters like using their skill 3 especially dps characters like using their skill 3 at the start of the round so does this base increase yeah it increased the chance to 80 percent hmm and this lasts for three turns instead okay yeah that's that hurts <laughs> all right let's read some of their pass some of his passives Okay, so this is what his um, signet does. Increases the caster's evasion by 40% and accuracy by 40% and increases damage dealt by all allies by 30% when this is applied to the caster. Okay, great. <laughs> good to know. That's actually a really good buff. <laughs> Especially if you're running your light team. That is actually terrifying. But we don't have a lot of DPS and 
light teams, but that does make Rebecca kind of scary off her first round, especially if she gets, if she can get one of your enemies, like, one of her enemies to, like, half HP, she can probably get you down to, like, way more now, or potentially one-shot one of your dark units. So, yeah, Rebecca mixed with this dude could be really dangerous, or pretty much anybody. I, Ellie could probably be a little bit dangerous, but not many people run Ellie because she's not useful on the defending side, so, yeah, that's also a thing. So yeah, you still gotta watch out for this guy, especially with like some heavy light damagers like Britain. Britain can probably do a lot of damage with this. Alright, let's see his level 60 talent. Has a high chance for the caster's turn to come quicker. What? At the start of the... Oh, so that's gonna definitely help him apply this first. Okay, activates Resolve for an ally for one turn if the ally takes fatal damage. Restores the target to 50% and that target gets increased by... F yeah, he's definitely great for decaying. I don't know if I'm going to actually get him because, you know, my luck is trash when it comes to summoning. But I guess I'll do one summon because I definitely do need help with decaying. Hold on, before I actually move on, we got the. Alright then. It's actually pretty sick. Alright, time to go check out Ian. Alright, Ian. Fangirls are gonna go all wild for you. This character kind of reminds me of something you will see in um, Stray Dogs a little bit. If you guys have actually watched the anime. Um, let's get down into his leader skill. Leader skill increases wind and dark units HP. His first attack taunts. Oh, wait. Oh, he's another defender. I just realized this. Oh, yeah. Ian is a guild battle character you have to get him through like guild battles and guild battles are coming in like four days or three days from now so yeah it should be interesting it starts preparation on sunday so yeah you got a few days from now then it goes through a different phase the attacking phase i think or something like that then it goes to the end phase the next day but the preparations start on sunday if I remember correctly. If I'm wrong, do correct me. Alright, so his taunts... He does damage to one enemy and adjacent. So, one enemy and whoever is beside him. And has a chance to taunt up to two times. And he also has the lower one since he's attacking more enemies. Alright. Second skill. Penetration damage to two enemies has a chance to decrease their attack by 30% and restores the caster's HP by 15%. Okay, that's not that bad. Oh, and it's on a low cooldown too. How much? Oh, 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 Jesus Christ. That's on a low cooldown. So yeah, you're gonna have a tough time killing him if you max this out. I'm kind of leaning towards this, but let's get Let's see this. Oh, five cooldown. Inflicts damage on one enemy. Has a chance to remove all their buffs from that target. And a chance to stun for one turn. Oh, dear God. Um. Alright, some of these characters they're releasing are, <laughs> are battle tanks. They're literally battle tanks. Like, what? <laughs> That's really not half bad. Alright, so let's see his passes and see what, if he's really what we want to, like, aim for. 100% uh, chance to gain protection on that. To one allies. To one allies. Have I just been noticing now that they're saying allies instead of ally? At the start of the wave or turn. Wait, start of the wave or turn? Oh, so this 
So this is pretty much both. So you wouldn't have to build protection. Wait, does he do this like every turn? He just protects someone? If so, that's that's going to be really annoying. That's going to be really, really freaking annoying. If that's exactly what he does. Restores the caster's HP by 20% and removes one debuff from the caster if the caster is below 50% HP at the start of the turn. Reduce damage taken per surviving ally. So he's going to be taking 12% less damage if everybody is up. If we're counting himself, but he says, but it says surviving ally, so he wouldn't count himself, right? If that's the case, then that's 15%. Not really sure. But let's see his level 60. Restores the caster's HP each time an enemy dies or an ally dies. Okay. That's actually a character I've been actually looking forward to and actually thinking about. I was hoping they would actually make something like this just because I wanted to like benefit off everybody dying. This character is going to be weird to build because you want to build him tanky, but you also want to benefit from his damage too. That's going to be weird. So, hmm. Eh, I would probably just build him straight tank, if anything, just to make him more tanky. And probably say, screw damage. Because he'll naturally get damage as you star him. Alright. Has a 60% chance to taunt all enemies upon... Oh, upon allies' death. That could actually be useful in a couple of dungeons. So that's not half bad. You're so emo, dude. That is like the weirdest howl I ever heard in my life. <laughs> I'll admit this. His three is very amazing. That I can get behind. I will do one summon for this character, and I'm going to hope. I get him. I'll be fine with another Elektra dupe too, or Nemesis, because Nemesis got her rework, and I'm kind of interested to see how that actually plays out. So let's hope for one one of the future characters, and not a SR. If it's an SR, please give me another Cordelia so I can, you know, start maxing out her skills. But yeah, let's. Oh, oh, never mind. Bad chance with that. Oh yeah, pretty much I have a new tactic. Um, every weekend, once I'm done with all my rankings and everything, and I get my rewards, I pretty much use 40 crystals every week and get 20 slots every week. This is exactly when I get my rewards. So I'm slowly building up room as I go. I'm not just going to go and just throw all of my my crystals into it. That'd be insane to me. All right, let's see what we get. Ah, no, we still have no luck this week, dude. That sucks. That's unfortunate. We just have had really bad luck. Oh my God, it's worse than I thought. It's way worse than I thought. Jeez. Yeah, I think I've done something for a while. For a long while. It's just not worth it. I guess I'll use a teammate's... <laughs> yeah, I guess I'll use a teammate's... Um, Amen. But... The thing is... It's gonna limit me, too. Because... If I was to go into DK's dungeon, I would have to have Seiya. And I don't have Seiya, so... That limits me more than I would love. I, I, 
I can just admit I'm not getting my pulls I need, but eh, that's the risk you take when you pull. So I gotta wait into a few days for something to happen. Unfortunate. I'm already full, dude. And I don't need any more Morgans. Please stop. My whole friend list is literally full of Morgans. I don't need any more. But yeah. Here is the progress of my team again. This week. I was not trying to click that. Cordelia is ready for Teo. But Teo Dungeon won't come <sighs> for a long while. Probably going to be the next Advent Dungeon if we don't get a new one. Which I'm hoping we don't get a new one. I hope we get like a, you know, a break so another, I can get the Teo. <laughs> really hoping, but, you know, yeah, you never know with this game, you know. <laughs> My life. Anywho, <laughs> I build her up. We're ready. Cannot wait. Got my Ramu here. The main two units we need to actually get ready. I'm currently working on Elektra and Leafa and Rue. So, yeah, those are the next characters I gotta build up for Sid Dungeon just so I can get a, you know, freaking Sid. I gotta make sure I don't have any. Freaking, um, yeah, I need to take these off, especially when going into Sid's dungeon, because that's just going to kill Leafa. Even though I'm pretty sure her... Oh, yeah, that's going to be an issue, considering Leafa loves to crit, especially with all this if she's enraged. <laughs> that's going to be annoying. But I think as long as I make it to Sid, she won't have to worry about mental seal. But yeah, dealing with the spiders, that's going to be like a huge issue. So I'm going to have to keep her out of rage or she's going to literally kill herself. But she gets regeneration every turn. So, you know, that's the thing. <laughs> but yeah, guys, hope you all enjoyed. I'll see you guys on the next one. Till then, peace out. Don't let anyone tell you what you should do I got a clear view We're gonna make it soon Just keep pushing through You're what you got to lose You're what you got to lose